Hello there, friends. Rebecca here, the Dragon Librarian from Farmington Community Library. And Zephyr and I are here today because we've got a very, very special video for you. And that is really my favorite uh, time of year to be doing videos because it is officially time for the best of 2023 book review videos. So the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be talking about all the books that I thought were just the absolute best that came out this past year. Um, I'm going to do the top, my top 10 favorites, split it into groups of five. So today we're going to talk about the top five. And next week, we're going to talk about the runners up five. Um, and then after that, we will talk about my top five favorite graphic novels. Now, of course, this is all just totally based on my own reading experience. There might be books that you're like, wait a minute, I read that book and I didn't think it was that great. Or, Miss Rebecca, how could you not put so, such and such book on this list? This book was fantastic. And that's because every reader is different, right? Every reader has books that they respond to in different ways. So this is just my personal list of the books that I thought were absolutely fantastic. I read well over 400 books this past year. I think it was the exact number was like 435 or something like that. So there were a lot, a lot, a lot of books for me to sift through to pick my favorites. But after a lot of deliberation, I finally was able to lock onto the ones that I thought were just the absolute best. And what I use to judge what I think are the best is a couple different things. So the first thing is that the writing has to be really good. Um, and the second thing is it has to make me feel feel something amazing. So it has to give me a lot of feelings, whether they're good feelings or sad feelings, then it has to be a book that I'm still thinking of even after I've read it for a long time. So those are the qualifications of these books. And like I said, some of these books you may have read and been like, no, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Or I can't, I read this book and it was the best book ever. And I can't believe it's not on your list. And if that's so, I want to hear about it. So let me know what books you think were the best of the year. And, you know, I will love to read them if I haven't already. So starting with number five, we're going to go from five to one, right? To build the anticipation. Number five is Heroes of Havensong, Dragon Boy. Heroes of Havensong, Dragon Boy. This book is by Megan Rees, which is not an author I've heard of before. This was a book that didn't get a lot of hype, um, which I was kind of surprised about because, I mean, the cover art was gorgeous. You know me and, well, dragons, obviously, right? If there is a book about dragons, I am 100% um going to read it so I was excited to read this one when I saw the cover um I hadn't heard about it like I said but I thought it was absolutely fantastic enough to where I was still thinking about it months after I read it and I just think it's absolutely fantastic so what is this book about well first of all I do just want to share with you that there is a gorgeous map which ugh, I absolutely love you know I'm a sucker for a good map and this is a story of four different main characters, actually. So there's four kids in this world, uh, the world of Haven, that has been torn apart by war. And in this war, everybody is on the one side of the war where most of the story takes place, terribly afraid of magic. And dragons have been hunted to extinction. So um, you've got this one character who has been raised to be a dragon grower, which helps dragons that are in danger to, to grow. You've got this young stable boy named Blue, who has, is actually chosen to transform into a dragon, which is crazy. And then you have this girl named Ren, who is um, a girl who lives on the other side of the islands, who is just has a history of magic with her family and she's learning magic from her grandmother and then you have a young boy named Shenley who is trying to find out the truth about his father because it was said that he was dishonorable in the war and he just doesn't believe it so you've got these four very different kids who come together in a way that you just couldn't imagine and it's just absolutely so cool I loved hearing from each of their voices I thought they were all really just awesome characters. I loved the world building in this book. The writing was really great. And I just love the idea of a kid that had to transform into a dragon. It was just very, very cool. Plus the opening line was such a hook, which I will read to you now and see what you think. Every 25 years, the king of Gerbera is eaten by a dragon. It is tradition. How can you not want to read more after that? 
So yes, I absolutely love this book. It took me completely by surprise. It was not a book I was hearing a lot about or knew a lot about before I jumped into it, um, but I absolutely loved it and it was definitely good enough to make my top five. Heroes of Haven Song, Dragon Boy. Okay, next one is Maisie Chen's Last Chance by Lisa Yi. Maisie Chen's Last Chance. No, I think this book actually won an award this year. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, I will have to look into it and double check, but I'm pretty sure it did win an award. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, I love Lisa Yi. Uh, she's written other really fantastic books, so I was excited to jump into this one. And then when I did, I was not disappointed because this was one of those really great books where I not only enjoyed myself and found myself super attached emotionally to the characters, but I learned a lot too. And I love books that teach me some stuff that I didn't know before about history. So this book is really interesting because it's a realistic fiction set today, but there's also some historical things as well. So this is a story of a young girl named Maisie who is visiting with her mom um, this tiny town in Minnesota and they're the only Asian American family there. So she's there with her mom because they're visiting her grandfather who is uh, ill and they're expecting to only be there for a couple weeks but it ends up being a lot longer in the summer to where it looks like she's going to spend the whole summer there. So she's helping out in a restaurant because her grandparents own a Chinese restaurant that has been in the family for generations. And as she's helping out there, she's learning all kinds of interesting things about not only the town, um, she's making new friends, but also learning about some of the, you know, uh, things that can happen in small towns when you're a minority, which is not so great. And she's also really learning about the history of the restaurant that she had no idea about and that is where the historical context comes in and the grandfather and her start to bond over him telling her their family history in this in this uh, in the form of like, these historical stories which was just absolutely fantastic I learned so much about this book it was a really emotional beautiful story these characters stayed with me oh I loved this book so so much Maisie Chen's last chance it was fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, Zephyr. Okay. Third on the list. Now, you had to have known that this book was going to appear on this list. You just had to have known. The new Percy Jackson book. Percy Jackson and the Chalice of the Gods by Rick Roridan. Percy Jackson and the Chalice of the Gods. This book was eagerly, eagerly, eagerly anticipated by not just me, but so many different readers in the world, right, that love Rick Riordan's writing, that love his his Percy Jackson characters. Um, and this is a continuation of the series where um, Percy and Annabeth are, and Grover, it's the original team, right, working together on this quest because Percy is trying to get college... Um, recommendation letters and the only way he can do that because this is a special college he's trying to get into is by going on these different quests so you can tell that this is going to be part of a new series because he needs three letters and the first this book was about the first letter that he had to get it's not long at all it's a very quick fast-paced story you do have to read the rest of the percy jackson books i would recommend before doing this one um i mean you could, I guess, try to read it, but you probably won't enjoy it as much because um, you, you need a lot of the context that happens in the original couple series to fully appreciate this one and the characters and stuff. So while you could do it and probably be okay um, to really enjoy this as much as possible, I would definitely recommend starting with the other series if you haven't yet. Now, I was very concerned, even though Rick Riordan has never let me down, I was very concerned that this book was not going to live up to the hype, that it was going to be just a cash grab sort of thing and that not very good. I was so pleasantly just happy to see that this was not the case at all. This book was so much like the original Percy Jackson series, it made my heart sore. It was you know, tense and full of drama. It was absolutely hilarious. I laughed out loud a few different times. Um, there were great punny titles. It was just everything about this book was fantastic and it filled with everything I love about the Percy Jackson universe. So if you do love Percy Jackson and you've read some of the Rick Burden books before, highly recommend picking up the first book in his new series. It's absolutely phenomenal. Percy Jackson and the Chalice of the Gods. It's a cool cover too. All right, 
We're getting down to the wire now. We're down to books number two and books number one of my favorite, favorite books of the year, right? Okay. Book number two. This was actually kind of hard because I'm not going to lie. Books two, the books I chose for positions two and one, that was really hard to decide which one was going to be number two and which one was going to be one because I really just, these books, oh man, they're really fantastic and emotional. But I finally made the decision and here we are. Book number two, The, possibi or the Probability of Everything by Sarah Everett. The Probability of Everything. Now this book I was first on my radar because a, um, a teacher on social media that I follow that I really respect a lot um, recommended this book and said it was the best book she had read. So I was really excited to read it. I devoured this book. I could not stop reading this book. I have not been able to stop thinking about this book ever since I read it. I have been pushing it into everybody's hands I possibly can. I've actually been having it go through um, the children's department at work and the rest of the people at the library I'm trying to get to read this book and I'm having them all sign it too because this is my copy of the book um, of the people that I've had read this book because I just want to talk to everyone about it. I want everyone to read it and I want to have conversations with everybody about it because there's so much to talk about. So what is going on with this book? Why, why am I so excited about this book? So this is a book about a young girl named Kemi who has just learned that there is going to be an asteroid that hits the earth in, in a few days and everybody will be wiped out. What in the world do you do with that knowledge? So she decides to spend what time she has left creating a sort of time capsule about the things that she loves best about her family and the things that are important to her family members. So that way, if, you know, aliens ever come to the planet or the planet ever comes back and more people are there again, they will be remembered. Whew, that is a heavy topic just in and of itself, right? The way that it is described and written about through this girl's point of view is so beautifully done. I loved Kemi. She has a very sciencey brain. The way she approaches everything was just really awesome and just full of beauty. I loved it. Taking nothing for granted and living every day as if it could be your last. Now, I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to give anything away about this book. I would also highly recommend <clears throat> if you're planning to read this book, do not look up anything about it because there is a big, big, big twist big twist in this book and I don't want to spoil it and you don't want to be spoiled either. You need to read this book going in and just experience it. I can't say anything more about it but there is a huge twist that is very integral to the story and will blow you away. That's all I'm going to say about it. Number two book, The Probability of Everything. It is a masterpiece. Loved it. All right, so number one children's book, that I read in 2023. You ready? Nick Blake and the Remarkables by Angie Thomas. Nick Blake and the Remarkables. Now, this was a book that I was very, very much anticipating. I was really excited about it. Why? Because Angie Thomas is the author of a bunch of um, young adult books that are absolutely fantastic. The one you've probably heard of is The Hate You Give. So she writes really great young adult books. This is her first children slash middle grade book and I was just so hyped for it. But also a little worried because it's like, oh no, you know, I know she writes great YA books, but what if she's not good at writing kids books? I loved this book. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It was so much fun. It was very much reminiscent of a book in like the Percy Jackson universe or the Rick Riordan Presents series where you have a main character, a young character, their life is turned upside down. They have to go on a quest with a couple friends, learn things about themselves and their history as they go through it. You're learning things about uh, tradition, mythology, folklore, stuff like that. And this is very much like that story. So Nick's family are um, made up of these magic users called the Manifestors. They're Remarkables. People that can use the magic are called Remarkables. Um, everybody else that can't is are Unremarkable. So she has a history of it, her and her dad. She is excited about being a Manifestor because, well, first of all, she gets a little hellhound puppy who I absolutely adore. It's one of my favorite characters in the book, just saying. Um, 
but she's not allowed to use magic. Her dad won't let her use it because he's just afraid of her being able to, you know, not having it under control, which is sort of frustrating for her. Well, she ends up having to go on a quest for this magical object when her dad gets uh, arrested for a crime that she knows he did not commit. So she has to go with two friends to find this magical object to try to um, exonerate him. So this book is steeped in African American tradition and folklore and mythology and it is just absolutely phenomenal. Reminded me a little bit of um, the Tristan Strong series if you've read that one by Kwame Mbalia uh, which I absolutely love as well. But this book is just it's really really special. So why this book and not any of the other books out of the hundreds of books I read last year? Well it just hit me in all, all the all the things I love. The writing was fantastic. It was fun. It was a fun adventure fantasy story. Um, and I've, I'm still thinking of it, even after I read it, you know, months ago. I absolutely love these characters. It is the first one in a new series, so there will be another one. Um, I don't know yet soon, I hope, but I haven't heard anything about book two, but this is going to be part of a series. So it's a beautiful, wonderful story. I absolutely loved it. And if you haven't read it yet, I hope you will, because it is definitely worth it. Nick Blake and the Remarkables by Angie Thomas. Well, those are my top five favorite children's books that I read in 2023. I hope that some of these books sound really interesting and maybe if you haven't heard of them or read them before, you'll want to give them a try and pick them up. Um, if so, they are all available at Farmington Community Library, so I highly recommend doing that. Um, and next week, we're going to talk about my top five runners up uh, for favorite children's fiction. So thank you so much for watching, friends, and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day.